So the first thing I'm going to do to make these monster cookies is I am going to get my freeze dried eggs in to start uh, rehydrating. So one tablespoon of freeze dried egg powder and two tablespoons of water make an egg. This recipe for the monster cookies calls for three eggs. So I'm going to put my the ones, the eggs that I am using as of current, I just store them in a quart jar with a seal with a moisture dry thing in there. So now I need to add uh, two, four, six tablespoons of water. I'm using warm water just to kind of help. So that's two, that's four, three, <laughs> four, <laughs> five, and six so now i'm going to just kind of stir this up and then just put this aside so it can keep it hydrating and then i'm going to get all my the rest of my uh, ingredients together okay let's get these these uh mustard cookies on the first step is going to be like most always most every recipe if you see cookies is have room temperature uh butter and which I do right here and this calls for uh, one stick so here we go all right tablespoon we'll use a little paddle there for that okay now there's my butter and it also and it calls to mix up the sugars with it also so take my little piece of bread here that I put in there to keep it from getting hard which I don't know for sure it even works to be honest with you but I put it in there it's supposed to work and of course I don't know how hard it would be if I hadn't so I always pack my sugar I review this recipe again because when I was going over gathering the gathering all the ingredients it's it don't have no flour on once i said maybe she just forgot to add it so i went and looked up another recipe for it sure enough it has no flour so there is my one cup of sugar brown sugar I'll put my bread back in there okay and then it calls for one cup of white sugar i always have a cup in my sugar so here is my one cup of white sugar so now we're going to mix the cream these together. I'm going to, with clean hands, <laughs> this is for us, and I am going to lock that down, and I am just going to put that on there, and it's going to cream for a couple of minutes. This is after a couple of minutes, and then we are going to add the rest of our liquids. So we have three-fourths of a teaspoon of vanilla, so one two three okay and then we are going to add one and a fourth cup of peanut butter let me see I'll be honest with you, if I wasn't filming this, I probably would just guess at this. <laughs> but since I'm filming, I'll be a good girl and I'll, I'll measure. I'm going to unlock this, pull this up because it's easier. And I'm going to use my little scooper thing here. And I do not even know where I got this <laughs> little thing, but it's handy. So there's one cup and scrape this out of here. Probably a Ross or TJ Maxx when I would guess where I got this at. Okay, and then as for the rest of it, guys, I am, because it calls for another quarter of a cup, I am just going to guess at that. <laughs> Put that in my sink. So... So there's an eighth and then there's a fourth okay so there is our peanut butter okay and then it 
Then we should add our eggs. But let's get this mixed up some first. And then we'll add our eggs. So we'll lock this back down. Okay guys, it says to add one egg at a time, but since I'm using these freeze rehydrated freeze dried eggs, I really can't add them one at a time. So we're going to be a rebel and we're going to add it all at one time and see if it, <laughs> I don't think it's really going to make that big of a difference. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on stir and then just add my eggs. I'm going to scrape the bottom down, scrape, we'll scrape the bowl. If you, any of you use a stand mixer, you know it's a good idea to always scrape your bowl down at least a couple of times. Sometimes more I have to, I find. That's the only aggravating thing to me about a stand mixer, but it has so many other benefits that I'm not going to complain about having to scrape it down a little bit. And, and yes, sometimes I forget also to <laughs> lock it. So we have added our uh, all the wet ingredients. So now we're going to start adding the other ingredients. We've got, and I think the quick oats go last. So we're going to go ahead and start with the chocolate chips. It says one and a half cups of chocolate chips. I have milk chocolate. That's what I'm using. I think you could use whatever kind that you had, but this is, I had this bag open and I have, I just now realized my dishwasher was going, guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> ah, drop the spoon. If you ever watched my older big cooking videos, you know this is normal. And yes, I could have got all these together before I did this video, but also, a little secret about me, I love to cook, but I hate to wash dishes, guys. I hate to wash dishes. So, we're going to put one and a half of chocolate chips. And then I have, from the station, I got Keith <laughs> to go to our local little one store town, which is a gas station restaurant and grocery store all in one and we're going to put uh well it's i probably should have not put a whole half of chocolate chips in there i could sure replace it with this but we're gonna live wild guys i'm gonna guys i'm gonna add some m ms one king size or share size package of m ms in there and then we're gonna add a half a cup of coconut which I have right here. So we're gonna put some coconut in there. There we go. And then we're gonna mix that up and then we'll add the last thing, which is our quick oats. So I'll spare you the noise. Okay, we got that mixed up now. All we like is adding the four and a half cups of quick oats. So, let me get quick oats here. And I did get another thing out in case I don't have enough in here. And I love this, well this, this one thing is, a lot of wood cups don't fit. Okay, so we're gonna add, that's one. That's two. That is three, and we're going to have to go ahead and get out, open my other one up, which is fine. But that's just a half, so we got the half in there, so all I need to do is open up my new container. Boy, they got fancy with their thing, but here, sure, it needs this to open. Here we go. So now we like one more cup. Okay, so now we just need to mix this together. I'll spare you again the noise. Hey guys, as you see, it's all mixed together, so we're going to turn this off. And now I'm going to get my cookie sheets, and we're going to put them out on the cookie sheet. Hey guys, I forgot one of the dry ingredients, which is two teaspoons of baking soda. 
Uh, so one, I hope this works. I'm going to try to put it around everywhere, and I'll be sure to mix this up real good with a wand when I finish. So let's put this back on. Hey right, guys, I did let that mix a little extra long since I did add that baking soda like that at the end. <laughs> I'm just being real with you guys. Just being real. So let's lift this up. And there goes flying the cookie dough. Let's get the cookie dough off of this paddle, and then we can remove this paddle. And get it in the sink and we can start rolling up our cookie not roll it up <laughs> dish on our to scoop it our cookie dough okay so let's start scooping these up and see what see what we get here i got just got a regular size cookie scoop hey guys i still as you can see have more dough in that bowl and i have got 20 cookies here on this cookie sheet and i have got 15 cookies here on this cookie sheet so i'm just put them in the oven at 325 this recipe says for 10 to 12 minutes we shall see okay guys here is the first batch i did find the recipe that i had used from make it make said 325 and they wasn't cooking so and i'll do a recipe that i looked up to see if they had to have flour said 350 so i turned the temperature up to 350 these ended up cooking about 18 minutes but i bet you the next batch won't have to cook that long because i'll have the oven at 350. i am it does say to take them out just a little bit early if you want them to be chewy so i am plus leave them on this the cookie sheets when you take them out of the oven for five minutes and then put them on trays so that is what i will do just wanted to check in with you and let you know that little update guys i got all the cookies baked this baked uh for i started at 325 but they wasn't baking it this ended up baking like for 18 minutes because they uh because i ended up having to i looked up the other recipe besides the one that i got and it said at 350 not 325 so i turned the oven to 350 but anyway so and i ate one of them they're okay they're a little bit harder than i like but but they're they're not overdone but i like my cookies soft and then this last batch here, I've let cook for like 10 minutes, exactly. And they may be a little overdone, but that's what the other recipe, I think it's just for taste, was the name of her, her website. I'll have it linked below. It said to take it out a little early. And we let it set in here for five minutes and then we put it on the cooling rack. So I'm gonna try that too. So <laughs> we shall see. Okay guys. All the cookies are done. Ended up with 66 cookies. Mine is two because I tried one from this batch, which I had told you that I cooked longer because I had to change the oven temperature. These were more crispy. Then I cooked these only for 10 minutes for this batch. And I tried one. <laughs> and, uh, oh, definitely, I like these better because I love soft cookies. So, but both of them are delicious. But anyway, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed cooking with me today. And give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you did. And this will also be up on my other channels, KBS Homestead. I will, I'm going to do both, put, put them on both channels right now since KBS Homestead is so new. So if you will, go over there and subscribe. And uh, because eventually, I will just be putting my cooking videos on KBS Homestead. So anyway, guys, I hope y'all enjoy this. I will have the recipe from the website that I actually use the cook times and the right cook. I think that, I think that one went a little better. So... I'll see you next time. Bye.